Welcome to The Liberating Secret with your host, author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. The Liberating Secret is dedicated to revealing the mystery of the gospel, which is Christ in you, the only hope of glory. Let's join Sylvia Pierce for today's lesson. Welcome to The Liberating Secret. My name is Sylvia Pierce, and so glad to be with you again. Today, we're going to venture into the chart again. We're going to look look at the chart, and guess what? It's the last eye. We're going <laughs> to see that it's really a, a Christ eye, mm. because I really get myself back, or get my precious humanity back. Right. Wow. For so long, we hated that humanity and did not call it precious. Actually, we were calling it Satan. Well, I was calling it a nature of its own, like I had a nature of its own and satanic and bad and evil. Oh, mm. now I know that my vesselhood is precious mm -hmm. to God. Yes. Well, I can remember the day and it's kind of snuck up on me. I, 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 I was like, I woke up one day and I thought, gosh, I like myself. Well, I've never done that before. I've never been here before. This is like, why? Wow, because it's, I already knew it was not me living. It was Christ. But I didn't know any longer say, well, okay, it's Christ going to the grocery store. It's Christ going to the bank. It's Christ being at home. It's Christ, Christ, Christ. I mean, really, I started saying, you know what? I'm going to the grocery. Mm. I'm going to the bank. I'm going to go visit Bill out in California. <laughs> I'm going to get on an airplane. I'm going to stay home. I'm getting in the car. Oh, but it's really, and we always say, we take a wink. Yeah. It's not really us. And it's as if Christ goes to the background, and now he's expressing his life out from us. Right. Now, there's a verse that Jesus brings in that I've always loved, out from you shall flow rivers of living water mm. Mm. out from us. So it ends up kind of being an unconscious consciousness, yes. doesn't it? Yes, it does. It, it takes you a while to get there, and the Holy Spirit has to fit that uh, by revelation inside you. He, he has to do that. You you move in by faith, and you know you take like Galatians 2.20 and just simply state it. I'm going to believe this. I'm crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me, and so on. And you move in by faith, and you take that. And what you take takes you in his time, in his way. The Holy Spirit brings it back from the other side, and it becomes you. And all of a sudden, you get yourself back, and all of a sudden, you see yourself now as 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 a as a form the human expression is a form of another as a form of jesus and yet you just end up being yourself and really loving your humanity and you love just being you but of course the wink is as sylvia said it's really him living as you mm -hmm. he's the real you as you you get yourself back but that self previously i did not want to get back because i saw it as an independent self and a bad self and an evil self, which was really Satan's light. It was Satan's phantom self disguising himself as me. The human vessel me was never bad. It That's was right. just indwelled by a wrong deal, by, right. by Satan himself, as the spirit of error from Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. three. He was just dwelling my human vessel, making me think it was me, and it was a bad me, and of course that was carried over into the Christian life, where I thought I was still, well, I'm just me, but I'm kind of a bad me. I don't really like me, but Jesus is kind of helping me. He's got to improve me, I guess. But that never worked. It never happened as much as I struggled. And so anyway, when when the Holy Spirit got all this straight, the final, the final little human eye came back with a bang. Well, wow. all of a sudden I thought, no, I'm in the foreground. I'm just being me and I'm teaching my tennis. I'm acting and I'm just in a some in a, in a way I became detached in a sense because I detached from me, it's worrying right. about me and trying to get myself right and trying to improve myself. And I could just be me, which is really he 
living as me. That's right. With a wink, we With know it's wink. really. And you know what? Then we all of a sudden we have fun. Mm. We have fun being ourselves. Yeah. We have fun in life. It's not just oh my gosh, such a duty, and oh I, I just can't do. It. You see, everything mm. changes. Now, in a sense, we always say that the human doesn't. The human vessel doesn't change. And I say the essential personality that we have probably doesn't right, change. Right. However, I, I sure don't look the same. I'm not manifesting the same thing that I did when I was bound up. Right, when I yeah. was bound up, I was pretty suppressed. I tried to suppress my feelings. I was insecure. I never thought of myself as being anything that could ever do anything, little, let alone being on TV or mm -hmm. being, uh, you know, on the radio or being a teacher of the Word of God. Never thought that about myself. And, uh, and so, but now that Christ is the real me living as me, my goodness, all kinds of creativity comes out. I mean, I'm writing books like I've never written before. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I'm constantly, new things are popping out all the time, and I'm never, it, it just never ends because it's out from me shall flow rivers now of living water. And so it takes the attention off of me. So I'm not thinking about me. You know, one time somebody said, Sylvia, do you love yourself? She said, now don't answer quickly. And so I thought, well, okay, I'll think about that. And then I thought, I don't know. Now, why don't I know? Well, because I'm not thinking about myself all the time. So I'm not mm -hmm. thinking, oh, do I love me? Oh, I love, I'm not, you see, I'm out from myself. So I'm not really concentrating. And I thought, oh, the only way I know is I don't hate myself anymore. <laughs> so the opposite must be absolutely, I must be thrilled with myself. And I want to tell you, when you are thrilled and have peace with your own, make peace with your own humanity, your own skin, the way you're made, you'll make peace with everybody else too. Mm -hmm. Then you won't have all these requirements on yourself. You won't have it on other people and, lo and love others like you love yourself. Well, mm -hmm. that really is true self. True self-love is loving the one who lives in this right. uh, common human being. And wow, I mean, it's a wow life. It's an exciting life. It's a life of adventure. It's a life where we never know. I liked, you know, in the last crusade with Indiana Jones, mm -hmm. remember that, that I remember this one part where somebody came to Indiana Jones and says, well, there were things exploding and you know how yeah. his, his movies always work. <laughs> well, and then somebody said, well, what are we doing next, Indy? And he said, uh, I don't know. I'm making this up as I go along. <laughs> and I thought, ah, that's me. <laughs> now the spirit is making, the spirit in me is so creative. And so, I mean, all the new things that are, pop, things that I never thought could come out of me are there because it's the living God and living in this common person that can read the Bible and understand it, teach it to others, mm -hmm. be on television, write wonderful things, I will have to say, because I look at my writing and I think, oh my gosh, I don't remember writing that. It's like automatic writing or something that it just comes out. Not only that, the love of Jesus is so strong in me that even the person that's not even saved, I don't even see them the same way. Right. I don't even see, you know, you know, we were talking about this sometimes. Unsaved, we know they're unsaved. We're not universalists, that's for sure. We know that people have to receive Christ. They have to make that decision. We know that. However, the way I see people, I see through all that, and I see a person it's almost like a prodigal son. They really belong to God, but they've been stolen away, and they're and they they're in bondage and they can't get out themselves. But I see the potential of what the Holy Spirit could be in that person, and I'm telling you, I fall in love with them. I do, and it isn't even me falling in love. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You don't have to be a certain religion. It doesn't. Have, you don't have to be just every just anybody that God will give me, and it, there's just no reason to it. It's just agape love that just pours out for the least. I mean, and, and so, I mean, nobody has to say, you've got to love people, you've got to love God. Nobody has to tell us any of those things. They're just natural. Right. And we're living like on the Sermon on the Mount. That's the summit living. We're living on the mountain, really. And when it says... Uh, 
uh, uh, consider the lily, how it toils not, neither does it spin. It just receives, it walks along, unaware of itself, just being. And I will have to say, when we get before the Lord, He's going to say, oh, Bill, look what I did through you. And you're going to say, I don't remember doing all that. Mm. You see, because it's like we're unconscious of ourselves, really. A person that's trying to improve themselves is totally conscious, self-conscious. They're not other other people conscious or God conscious mm. or Christ conscious. Mm. That's good. You see, but they're con but and God's going to say, Bill, oh, my gosh, I can't. You don't even know. I'm going to show you everything that I did through. You're going to say, wow, I don't even remember doing all these right, things. Right. And I don't remember it. And you're, and you're going to take your crown and you're going to throw your crown at his mm. feet. He's going to take mm. the crown and put it right back on your head. Mm. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. That'll be a wild moment. <laughs> it will. It will. Yeah, you know, Sylvia, it's been, it, it was so wonderful, you know, because when you're beaten down and you've seen for years, your humanity's bad and it's evil and you've been taught that and you have the sin nature so how could you ever accept your humanity couldn't and then when you you go through all this and you the sins out and you realize and your humanity comes back all of a sudden you see your humanity is so valuable and you it it's is. it's you're enjoying being human and loving everything about being human and you realize oh yes jesus came in the flesh he came wow. as a human being showing yes how valuable in the incarnation that humanity is. He came as the right. representative of man to show us, hey, mankind, it, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. And so you start embracing your humanity and, and loving to be human because you were subhuman before mm. when you were under the devil's power, you know? And so when you get, when he's, as Sylvia was talking about, when he's interpenetrating your humanity or quickening your humanity as it, says in Romans, Romans 8, he will quicken your mortal body. All of a sudden, you come alive to your humanity and being human. You're more human than you ever were, and you're appreciating the humanity in everybody else. That's and right. it just, you know, the Word became flesh, and he's in some sense st still becoming flesh, not in some weird sense that I'm God, but um, hopefully you'll get it. Well, he's spirit. being manifested in your flesh yes, is what is. it is. Yes, Interpenetrating yes. your body in your flesh and, and, and because he wants to be you. Mm. He wants to, wow. That's, wow. <laughs> and he wants to be me. Wow. Well, wow. And I, he's discovering how wonderful he is being you. Whoa. And he's seeing that in me. When you whoa. see that, you will love everybody else. Wow. You will not be judgmental and judge everybody downward. You'll judge people upward. You'll judge people as, wow. as God sees them. Now, we're not saying that they're not lost people and there's not saved people. We're not saying that. But the thing, what happens to us, we become God only minded. We start seeing through and seeing really the real pain in the person, the real, the place where they're bound up. And we're, and really it's like, come on now, come on. Well, we want to help you see that that's not who you are, that Christ is in you. Now, you know, I have a friend in Hilton Head, Fran Giles. She used to go around and grab people's face. I didn't care who they were and says, I just see Jesus in you. And one day she said to the Lord, now, wait a minute, some of these people are lost. And how can I, how can I know that Jesus is there? And this is what the Holy Spirit said to her. And I love this. He said to her, oh, Fran, I'm always there. I'm either trying to get into a person that's lost, and I'm trying to get out of a person who is saved and who knows me. So, you see, God, Christ is always there, either trying to get in or out, you see. Because, you see, when we are free, what we're really doing is freeing up the Spirit to be all that He needs to be by us. Mm -hmm. That we're freeing the Spirit up to be to be everything in, inside of us when we're free. Now, get it straight. We're not saying we're free from uh, to sin. We're not free to sin. No. We're free from sin. Right. <laughs> and we're not free to uh, cross the law and be lawless. We're not free to do that. We're dead, though, to the performance that the law demands us to be. We're dead to that because we're not independent selves, you see. Right. And, 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 and we're 
finally liberated, precious, and I love to say this, we have a precious humanity. So we can enjoy ourselves, mm -hmm. we can enjoy other people, we can enjoy the potential in everybody, and it ends. we end up having a lot of fun. Yeah, you know, I was uh, just thinking a lot lately about, you know, the the Trinity and the triune God and the love relationship that uh, the Trinity has with one another and that they, it's a circle of love uh, where they, they're loving on each other. And, but that wasn't enough for them. They wanted to expand the circle and they wanted to bring us into the circle to, to love us. And so to do that, you have to be distinctively unique you. And so he, they expanded that circle. Well, I so love that. You know why? Because God is a family man. Mm. He's not happy to just be a trinity just himself. No, love has to be outgoing, has to be. And you know, that's what happens to us. We end up being other lovers, mm. don't we? Yes, we sure do. Yeah, we, sure we do. do. So other well. lovers in love with God and with his p people. And you know, even the worst of the worst, you can love because the lover lives in you mm -hmm. to be your very to be the source of all your being mm -hmm. so this is this is uh, this is a wonderful wonderful life that we live wow yeah for, it, it's great because you you know there's a spontaneity that, that comes when you get your when you do get your self back as united to jesus that human self comes back then you're just a spontaneous person living life. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And of course, sometimes you'll, by the Spirit, you'll check back with the Lord and see, is, are you doing this, uh, Lord? Or what are you doing? What are you up to? All that kind of thing. But it's the spontaneous you it becomes. And that's not uh, saying that God isn't, of course, the transcendent God. Uh, you know, we still have this beautiful relationship with him, and yet we live out free out of a union as him that's right and so it's a wonderful thing it's both it's he's the beyond in the midst wow yeah Bill, i yeah. love that <laughs> that's great he is the beyond in the midst of us mm. which is wonderful so we just i i think this this whole series is just going to be absolutely wonderful freeing and it's going to open people up mm. to really understand themselves mm. and understand what the human is understand how much god loves the human being he came to redeem us to restore us to regene us mm. to regenerate us into mm. new creations and to, and to be really uh, to be us in all these multi millions of forms that he can be in that in that Fabulous. That's great. What were we going to, what was the title we were going to settle on for this? So well, the title of this is, it's about the self, mm. because it's the journey that we take from going to be a wrong self in, before we're saved, in Satan, to be a no self, because we don't, we do not have an independent self, right. to being a right self in Christ. Wow. And that's the journey. Oh, well, that's great. Well, that's what And actually, that's Galatians 2.20. Mm. Wrong self was crucified, mm. and I live, but oh, it's no longer I. That's the no self. But the self I live is the right self. I mm. live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself wow. for me. <laughs> wow, that is great. That's, that's great. As some people translate that, I, and I don't know either one, but... Uh, some of it is translated at the very end of that verse is, I live by the faithfulness of the Son of God. That's good, too. I like I live by the faith of the Son of God, but I like the other one, too. I'll take that as well. By the faith of the Son of God. Yeah, the, and yeah. what I love, sometimes I'll leave out the word, the life I now live in the flesh. Uh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. It's not evil flesh. Jesus doesn't live in evil flesh. Good point. Good point. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And wow. so we can't say that enough. You know why, Bill? Because that's taught everywhere that we have, we still have the old nature mm -hmm. and we have to fight. You know, if you think you still have the old nature, you're going to have to fight. You're going to have to change. You're trying to change yourself. You're trying to try to go to one program or another church or another place. When you see you, you already have been sanctified by the body death of Christ through the finished work of Christ. We're back. We never get over the cross. Never get over 
knowing that Christ is in us. Never get over that. We mm -hmm. preach nothing but Christ and him crucified. And so crucified to the world. And so we're crucified to the world. Mm -hmm. Crucified to the wrong use of our flesh and cleanse our flesh. We're, we're, we, that's us too. Crucified to the working of the devil in us. And so we're dead to all those things. Right. And now we're alive to Christ and God and forever. It's like we're raised from the dead, raised from the dead by the glory mm. of the Father. Wow. Raised Jesus from the dead. Now he's raised us from the dead to be the common me. Wow. Yeah, you know, it's a, you know, there's a scripture that says he condemned, he condemned sin in the flesh. Oh, yeah. And so it used to throw me off a little bit. I remember Norman Grubb said uh, he condemned sin in the flesh. He didn't condemn the flesh. That's right. Our human flesh. There's never anything wrong with it in, in and of itself. He condemned sin in the flesh. That's right. And, and, and that was the problem in Romans 7 where Paul says, It's no longer I who sin, but sin that dwells in me. There's this other power, a separate power in Paul that was causing the sinning, which you know Paul ended up agreeing with. But the culprit really was... Was Satan at bottom. And the reason that it was activated in him is because he believed in himself. Mm. That he, in and of himself, believed in a phantom self that had the power to, to change himself. Wow, to do good. <laughs> to do good. Wow. He wasn't, it wasn't that he was trying to do evil. He was trying to do good. And that's the Christian. None of us are trying to do evil. Right. It's the tr we have to get over the fact that we can't be a good self. Yeah, I never could get over that. <laughs> so yeah, exactly when Paul said, when I would do good evil is present with me yeah i didn't know right. his good was evil trying to do good apart from jesus is actually evil well i would think that's why he called the pharisees the devil mm. because there there they were they looked good they sounded good they knew this their script the torah they knew their scriptures that's yeah. for sure they knew and they kept all of the ever all the rules and they looked perfect but mm. inside he called them whitewashed tombs wow. and because they were all trying to be good wow. now the difference with a person that's in a roman seven he doesn't want to be a pharisee a mm. roman seven person is somebody that's really honest and really wants to wants the life of christ manifested and it's not happening so he doesn't know why and he struggles with it and finally realizes that he's giving satan power by believing in himself wow could you say something sylvia about a lot of people say paul wasn't a Christian in Romans. 7. Well, that's easy. Yeah. <laughs> because if we look at Philippians chapter 3, it gives Paul's life, really. And he talks about not having confidence in the flesh, that he was a Pharisee of the Pharisee. It said an interesting thing. It says he kept the law. He said, I kept the law perfectly. Well, now that's before he was saved as a mm -hmm. Pharisee. Wow. Now, over in Romans 7, He's not keeping the law perfectly. Mm. So it has to be that it was in his saved after he was born again, after he was uh, probably in Arabia when he went alone to find out what was wrong with him mm. is when he discovered, you know, he discovered that, that he could not keep the law in and of himself. He could not be the right kind of person in himself. He needed the spirit, the life of Christ within him. And that's where he learned the doctrine and the gospel that he gives us in his letters. And I will say this, and you said this on an other program. There is a verse in, and I want to read this verse in Romans 7. I'm sorry, in Romans 3. It says this. I, I love this verse. Take it back in Romans 2, sorry. Romans 2 verse 16 says this, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, every man and woman is going to be judged according to Jesus Christ and Paul's gospel. Hopefully, you will really dig in. And I always say this, be like a Berean. Go to your Bible. See that what we're saying, see what if it's the truth for yourself. Right. See for yourself. And you will see that the gospel that we're preaching is the same gospel that, G, that Paul said called his gospel, which really the other apostles didn't know and maybe probably learned later when they were thrown out 
and when the temple was destroyed and they were thrown out, they probably had to learn it real quick. Right, right. <laughs> they probably did. So we're going to end this series and end this program with a, with a word of wisdom to you. And the word is this. Know that you don't live any longer. Know that Christ is your life. He's not a part of your life. He's not an influence on your life. He is the life source that you can live by, that you can trust in wholly. And that life is within each of you. You might feel weak. You might feel not me, maybe those people on TV. But no, this is for the weakest and the probably the most desperate of God's people. Mm. This is for you. This is for you to know this. And when you know this, you will want to share this with everybody you know. You won't be able to help it, just like we can't help mm. it. So we want to end this series by saying that we love you and we mm. are praying for you. And if, if you want to write us back, if you want to write Bill, if you want to write me, you know, you can write, you can find my um, email and find Bill's email. We're, we're going to put Bill's email right on the Liberating Secret so you'll hear his, his see his email too. Write us, tell us exactly how this revelation has really impacted your life and turned you and, and set you free from the lie of an independent mm -hmm. self. So thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm. And remember, we move from wrong self in Satan to no independent self mm -hmm. to right self in Christ. Mm -hmm. So Thank you for joining us, and may God richly bless you. See Goodbye. You. Bye -bye. The more I try, the more I fall. You have been watching Liberating Secret with Sylvia Pierce. We want to send a special thank you to all our supporters that make this program possible. If you have been blessed by this program and would like to contact Sylvia, you can write her at P.O. Box 43268, Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. That's P.O. Box 43268. Louisville, Kentucky, 40253. You can also find more of Sylvia's teachings on our website. The web address is www.theliberatingsecret.org. That's www.theliberatingsecret.org. And be sure to watch again right here, Monday through Friday, at the same time, for The Liberating Secret with author and teacher, Sylvia Pierce. So until next time, may God richly bless you.